All right, so today I wanna to talk about a topic that is really weighs, I think, on a lot of beginner artists, and I've experienced parts of this. I know a lot of other people who have had it a lot worse than I did. But what I wanna talk about is how to cope and deal with being a budding artist who has parents that don't support what you wanna do. And for some people, this might seem trivial, but when you're experiencing it, it doesn't quite feel so trivial. So today, we're gonna to talk about some ways to deal with that and hopefully how you can either change their mind or if not, find ways to still pursue what is important to you and to find success and happiness as an artist. The first thing is to understand that not always, but more than likely, probability is high that the reason your parents don't support you isn't because they don't like you or they don't care about you or they want you to be miserable, but in fact because they do care about you and that they're worried that if you become an artist, you won't live a fulfilling life or be successful or be able to provide for yourself. And they have somewhat of a good reason to believe that probably because from their generation, it was a lot harder to be a successful artist and make a living than it is today. We live in a time where it is more easy than ever to make a living as an artist. But even just two decades ago, three decades ago, it wasn't the same. The existence of the internet has completely changed everything and made it much easier to get yourself out there to get acknowledged. And not only that, but there are so many more jobs that involve art, so many more things that need to be designed, so many more special effects, all these things that require artists, that there's a much bigger demand than there used to be. So understand that if they don't support you it might not be just because they think that you're not good enough or that they think art is stupid but just because they're genuinely concerned that you might not be able to make it out in the art world now that doesn't necessarily mean that they're justified in that or that what they're doing is good but understand that there's a good chance it's not coming from any sort of a malicious or malign place it's genuinely because they care all right now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about how can you make it so that they do support you or they do feel confident or convince people, but especially your parents if you're living at home still, you're in high school, that you know what, this is viable and you aren't stupid for believing me or trying to support this dream of mine. Now first thing that's going to help with that is to have some sort of a plan. There's so many young people that I talk to that they say, I want to be an artist. And when you ask them what that means to them, what do you mean you want to be an artist? They don't really know. They just know they want to be an artist, which is good and all. That's great that you want to do art, but saying I want to be an artist is like saying I want to work at a company. Well, what does that mean? What kind of company? Do you want to be an underground drug dealer? Or do you want to work for a marketing firm? Do you want to work at a uh, independent construction contractor? Or do you want to work as a lawyer, right? That's really vague and really broad. And that can raise some red flags and alarm bells in parents who are concerned about their child's success and their ability to parent well. Now, what I mean by a plan is not just a set of goals, right? Saying things like, all right, my goal, uh, my plan is to go to college, graduate, get hired by Disney and become a animated film director. That's not really a plan. And the reason I say that is because a huge portion of those things are things that you can't directly control. Those are more of goals, things that you want to work towards and try and achieve, but that you might not have direct control over. You can't necessarily control whether or not the hiring manager at Disney is going to hire you as a concept artist. All you can choose is how much you practice, how much work you put in, what you're going to accomplish personally. So. When I say make a plan, I mean figure out what is it that you as an individual are going to do to increase your chances of success. And that doesn't mean that if you make a plan, you have to stick to that for the rest of your life. You don't have to be married to your plan as you grow and you evolve and you change. Chances are your plan is gonna change as well. As you get more information, you find things that you like more and more, you might end up deciding you don't wanna be an artist at all. You might wanna be something else and that's okay. But making a plan gives you a starting off point where you can start making decisions instead of floating around in the void of nothingness, kind of directionless. And having that plan is going to hopefully give your parents a lot more comfort and 
feeling of stability in that this isn't a huge disaster, right? So have a plan, don't just set goals. Goals are good, but set a, have a plan that is actionable that you can follow through with. If that includes college, then put that on there. How many hours are you gonna work at this? You know, um, what is it that you're gonna work at? What are you trying to achieve, right? So have a plan. The second thing that might help, and this will depend from my experience, some parents are really receptive to evidence and examples, others may be a little bit more stubborn. But what you can try, and you know your parents better than I do, so feel this out, but one option is to show them examples of people who have done this and that it's not so crazy or uncommon. In today's world, there are millions of jobs that require artistic skills, whether it be graphic design, movie production, animation, architecture, everyone needs someone to design the album covers for their music, video game design, car design, there's need for artists in almost every single industry that creates a product. And that means that there's a lot of room for jobs. On top of that, in today's industry, where things are getting more and more automated through robots and things like that, the thing that I think will be last to be automated is any sort of career that involves creativity. Because if there's one thing that robots have yet to be able to replicate, it's the ability to create organic and beautiful looking pieces of art. And that's something that as of yet is still reserved for human minds. It's possible, there's lots of people have done it. You can look online at glassdoor.com and see the average salary of someone in a particular given field. For example, a concept artist, last time I checked, the average salary of a concept artist is around 60 to $68,000 a year, I believe. And for an illustrator, it's 48,000, which is only $2,000 less than the national average. That's not doing too bad. Maybe you want more for yourself, but as far as being able to provide for yourself, that's more than enough to live off of and not consider yourself a huge failure. The third and final way that I think you can show someone that not only do you deserve their support, but that it's smart and you know validated to support you and what you're doing is to put in the work. It might be a hard truth to hear, but there's so many beginner artists and not even just artists, but really anything, whether you're into snowboarding, fishing, architecture, video games, whatever it is, that they want to be respected and they want people to support them and have faith in them, but they don't put in any time to actually getting good at what they do. And it kind of leaves other people begging the question, why should I believe in what you're doing or support what you're doing when you're expecting me to care about it more than you do, right? If you're only putting in 20 minutes a day drawing, then yeah, their beliefs that you might not make it are probably founded because you're never gonna be successful as an artist if you're not putting in enough time. But if you're showing them that you spend all of your spare time working on this to try and get better, you forsake Netflix, you forsake video games, whatever it is, you know, I don't know, Legos, whatever your vice is that you find enjoyable, but really you feel like is a time waster because you know it's not getting you better or closer to where you want to be. If you're showing that you're willing to give that stuff up in order to get better at what you're claiming you want to do for a living, the amount of respect and really validation that you're going to get through that is going to go way way, way, way up. And not just with your parents, but anybody. When other people see how much time and work you put into something you care about, it instantly grants you more respect because you're showing that you're not just all talk, you're willing to walk the walk. And that speaks loads more than anything you could say. Because even if we accept people at face value and what they say, what's really going on under the surface is the analyzation of our actions. And you can talk all day about how badly you want to be an artist, how much you're going to do to get there, how much you're going to learn when you go to college, how much you're going to learn when you take this online course, but none of that really matters. What matters is what you do. And what you do is what's going to show people that not only do you have what it takes, but that their belief in you and their support in you is not foolish, but founded on evidence. So that being said, you need to start working hard. Even if you're in high school, even if you're in junior high, there's no reason why you can't start getting better at what you're doing and pouring hours of your time into it. Now, I know it can feel really difficult when you're in high school or really any sort of formal education and you've got all these other assignments to worry about. You know, you got your math homework, your English homework, all this stuff, and it can feel like, man, I just don't really have any time to get all this stuff done and I can empathize with that. But 
from being someone on the outside who no longer goes to school and has to live in the real world and where there is no one to tell you what assignments to do and uh, you don't have everything provided for you, you are in such an optimal spot because you have really very little responsibilities, which means you have so much time to sink into getting better. If you're in high school right now, you have a major advantage over the competition in that you don't have to worry about paying your bills, most likely. You don't have to worry about providing your own food or anything like that. You can focus really on almost all of your time on art besides the rest of your school stuff. Now, parents might not like to hear this, uh, but the truth is, outside of school, grades don't matter that much. Now, I'm not saying just blow school off or slough all of your classes at all. I'm also not saying that all those things are necessarily valuable, but what I am saying is that if you do those things, there could come consequences with it that are negative that might hurt you more. Like, for example, uh, if you slough class or get Fs in all your classes because you're focusing on your art so much, yeah, those classes might not be that important to a successful art career, but the relationship you have with maybe the people around you, like your parents, who might give you consequences for getting those Fs, is still valuable so you got to find a balance but just realize that getting an a in all of your classes is not really a great predictor of success as an artist so a lot of your time how you see fit i'm not telling anybody to just drop out of school that's not what i'm saying at all what i am saying is that if you get a b in a class because you were working hard on pursuing your goal of an artist uh, I think in the long run, that's not really going to be the worst thing in the world. So I know I might get a lot of flack for that. And there's going to be a lot of people say, why are you telling kids not to go to school? Yeah, that's not what I said. That's not what I said at all. But keep that in mind. You're at an optimal point where you have no responsibilities and a lot of resources provided for you for free, especially if you're going to a school with art classes. Man, after you graduate, you're gonna have to start buying all your own art supplies. And let me tell you, it could get really expensive really fast. So take advantage of this time and show the people around you that their belief in you is warranted by your hard work. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about, those are three great ways to hopefully get someone to not be so scared or unsupportive of your choice to become an artist. But unfortunately, for some of us, our parents just might not be supportive because they're not great parents. Now, I'm not accusing anybody. I don't know your life, and I think that you should be very cautious in calling anybody, even your own parents, bad parents. But that's not to say that they don't exist, and that sometimes people live lives where they're so unsatisfied and they were so scared to make decisions that got them closer to their dreams that they become resentful of people who do make those decisions and whether consciously or subconsciously they will try to sabotage other people's chances of success in order to make them feel better about where they ended up in life and even parents doing that to their own kids sadly now like i said it's hard to know when that's the case, and I'm not here to tell you how to determine that exactly. But I will tell you this, if you find yourself in that position, it's going to be really difficult to pursue that goal under those type of circumstances. Doesn't mean you can't do it, but it just means you need to be aware that there's people around you who might be invested in your failure. and. Being aware of that can help you have the mental tools to fight back against it internally and keep your motivation up. If you are in that situation, the best thing you can do is surround yourself with friends, teachers, other family members outside of your immediate family, anyone you can find who does have faith in you, and try and spend more time around those people in order to hopefully kind of try and counterbalance those things. Once you get old enough to move out, I recommend doing it as soon as possible. Might not even be because your parents are bad people. Might not even be because you hate them or you don't like being around them, but simply for the fact that when you are invested in pursuing a specific goal and you're surrounded by people who are invested in you not reaching it, you can only have it one way. Either you reach that goal or you stay with those people. I don't mean cut them out of your life, but when you're surrounded by that sort of environment, you're not going to find the level of success that you're looking for. So 
I know this is a sensitive topic and I'm sure there's people who are gonna take me out of context and in the comments be like, why are you telling people all these terrible things? But if you are in the situation that I'm talking about, I think that you know and you know how it feels and it can feel lonely because there's people all the time who will tell you, you know, your parents have your best interests at heart or, you know, they just really care about you. And the reality is in some circumstances, that's not the case. And it can be really hard and not just demotivating, but painful. So take hope in this. One, you're not alone. There's lots of people who have been in that situation, who made it out, pursued their dreams, and found success and happiness. You are not doomed to repeat the mistakes of the people who came before you. Secondly, don't give up. Keep pushing at it. It's gonna feel hard and probably harder for you than other people who aren't in that same situation. But there's a silver lining to this difficult problem, which is that because you have to work so much harder for it than a lot of other people might have to, you're gonna come out with lessons that other people didn't learn and probably with a better skill set for your age or you know, point in your life because of how much extra effort you had to put in order to maintain that motivation in order to push through all of that negativity. So yeah, it could be difficult, but use that as fuel to push yourself to achieve those dreams and those goals. So that's it for today's video. If there's one thing you take away from this whole thing, I want it to be this, that whether it's with your parents or school teachers or friends or family or even just random strangers on the internet. The number one way that you can show people that you're credible is by putting in the work. Talk is cheap, anyone can do it. But when you walk the walk and really show people that you're committed, that's when you'll start to get that respect that you're looking for and that support from friends, family, and even followers and strangers on the internet. So that's it for today's video. See you guys in the next one.